of information around what it's, the indications are, the contraindications, potential side effects, dosage if it's known, and it has links to all the various research studies, clinical trials all the way down to the bench and mice model research uh, that can let people really understand what the body of evidence is around complementary therapies. Uh, the other resource that I find is very user-friendly for patients and family members as well as for people um, that are working in clinical settings is the Memorial Sloan Kettering's uh, Herbs and Botanical Database. They recently have launched uh, the smartphone app called About Herbs uh, that you can put onto your smartphone and very quickly at the bedside look up herbs and the information is specific to cancer and they have monographs that are for patients as well as for health professionals. So they've really worked at trying to keep the language at a language at a level that patients can understand. And again, they have the references to the research articles. And I know that June and Gary Deng are working at updating it every three to four months. Uh, I also uh, just want to have a shout out to uh, ONS and uh, Georgia Decker, who is a former member of the SIG. Uh, she has developed a course, and I believe it is still offered periodically through the ONS education services and so if oncology nurses are wanting to get more of a grounding in this area I do encourage nurses to seek out the course the next time that it's offered through ONS and just I do have to mention that my cameo program cameoprogram.org also has an education program that's for health professionals it's really focused on supporting patients in making uh, informed decisions around these therapies and has links to a lot of the resources that we've been talking about tonight Fantastic. Great. Thank you so much, Linda. This brings me to my next question, and I know this question can get a little bit uncomfortable for us, so I'm just hoping that we can all express our own um, suggestions um, to the community, which is there are times that uh, since we don't get formal education in complementary and alternative medicine, and the community is fractioned uh, about the knowledge as well as their opinion, in a particular healthcare center in terms of how people will respond, lo a lot of times um, a staff or a nurse might feel um, uncomfortable with this topic uh, and, and working with um, a patient or community um, where a person might be taking complementary and alternative medicines, especially they might be taking some herbs or supplements. Um, so what can we suggest what can a person who is in that situation do? I would love to hear um, some pieces of advice that is practical for, for a person in that situation because not everybody knows uh, everything and we can't expect that. So what can they do if they come across a patient